Hello all, welcome to Clark Technologies. Uh, we are going to start this on-premise deployment series as we have informed uh, through our short videos. So as part of that, uh, today we will discuss about uh, how to install this Samuels uh, standalone runtime like on-premise server in our web in our laptop uh, as well as a uh, few more details regarding this so it's a kind of different series uh, videos we are going to plan so please subscribe share and like if you are visiting our channel for the first time and if you want to learn on-premise deployment and hybrid deployment in depth okay okay let's get started yeah and you are uh, visiting this for first time if you are not aware of uh, different kinds of uh, deployment strategies available in mulesoft like cloud hub deployment and what is the difference between cloud hub on premise hybrid or tf on uh, private cloud edition something so if you want to know all these kinds of different deployment models in detail or else just uh, to know the uh, thing okay uh, we have already created a video in our channel in detail uh, with this different deployment models if you want to see uh, I, can, I can provide the link in the description also uh, but if you would like to show, uh, see it more, more like uh, go to our cloud technologies channel in the video just to come down you will find this video uh, yeah this is called mule for advanced deployment strategies models here we have deployed uh, sorry we have explained everything uh, related to the cloud hub on premise hybrid runtime fabric private cloud edition government cloud all the different deployment models we have explained in detail so if you want to learn more just head up to heads up to this video first and uh, just go through this video then come back to this series okay so as part of on premise deployment uh, first we need to install the server in our uh, laptop what is server so in kind of uh, cloud hub deployment we no need to install any servers and all because the runtime plane control plane both are managed by mulesoft so if you want to know more about this runtime plane control plan as i said please visit that video first so that you will get more uh, idea okay so the control plane plane under runtime plane both are managed by mulesoft in kind in case of cloud hub deployments but in case of on-premise deployments or hybrid deployments the runtime plane is managed by customer itself so let's say if we would like to manage our applications if you would like to deploy our applications in our own mule server then we can uh, use this on-premise deployment v means here it's it's a purely a client requirement so uh, in your project if your client is not willing to share the logs or not willing to share their application data to the cloud hub uh, they would like to maintain their own private environment uh, so that they can uh, they will decide like uh, they will go with on-premise deployment so in kind of those scenarios we we need to know how to deploy these applications in on-premise uh, server standalone server or hybrid deployment how to manage all these things we should know so that we can work easily in their kind of in that kind of environments okay so to help you out uh, regarding this on-premise and hybrid deployment model so we are going to start this series uh, okay so coming to uh, standalone server uh, as we are doing practice right now so this mule standalone server uh, we can install in our own laptops but in real time what happened uh, because this standalone server should be up and running because we are going to deploy these applications into our server this uh, server is server needs, needs to be uh, up and running every day every time 24 by hours 24 by 7 right so if we install in our laptop we will not make sure our laptop is up and running right so in real time projects what will happen right they will take one uh, dedicated windows server or linux server uh, for this in that server they install this new standalone new uh, server which we are going to see right now uh, then so that that uh, windows server or linux server where they install this server is up and running 24 by 7 so that uh, on premise uh, applications are uh, ready to test anytime okay okay so we, you will get to know more details once you start this deployment and all so so first thing what we have to do is like we need to first download the standalone server mule server without studio now we don't need to uh, have any studio uh, as of now okay first we need to download the server we need to install it in our laptop okay then we are going to create a different projects using studio then we can deploy that applications into our own mule server our own mule standalone server not the cloud hub let's see step by step okay 
okay so i will provide this link for you in the description uh, in this link itself we need to download the standalone server if you can see in general we will download any part studio 7 plus mule 4 but now we need to select this option new standalone server so this server we have to download see here also you will see mule and studio but we need mule standalone select this option uh, select the latest version select your operating system in my case it is windows machine if you are using apple uh, laptops mac or linux you can you need to select that option so mine is windows so i selected it uh, you can give anything maybe i can give just as your, our channel name as i said in your real time projects you will not do this as server installation so just it's it's for our learning purpose so clarktechnologiesgmail.com mm. you need to fill this form actually in order to download it just like the studio okay mm. we can give any number just let me select randomly few values um, okay now you need to click on download see please check your email for downloading standalone it will send a link to your uh, that's why i'm i just filled the form in front of you just wanted to show the process okay so it will uh, send one uh, link for you in your email box with the which email you have filled in that particular form so email should be valid email okay uh, so let's head heads up to my uh, gmail there they will provide one link for you by using that link you can download the standalone server see your download link like this you will get one mail now go to the page now click on download one zip file will get download for you this is the new see new ee distribution this is nothing but mule standalone server or on premise server whatever the name you can say see new distribution standalone with latest runtime runtime is 4.4.4 4.4.0 so uh, it will it will give you the latest runtime of this server itself by default okay let's just download it so once it uh, the download is uh, done we need to extract this file okay so this is the zip now it, it it's get downloaded right so let me just uh, go to my downloads uh, i just wanted to copy this to somewhere in my d drive i just copy all the uh, zip file just you know, without any renaming and all now i will extract this okay i will extract this in my d drive anywhere you can extract as per your choice okay so mule uh, ee distribution standalone uh, but just for our uh, understanding i am just appending clart as a folder name okay uh, if you, once you extract it it will um, extract the folders for you just like the any part studio which we are going to uh, do usually but this is the server here we have one bat file by using that we need to start our server so let's uh, wait this to be extracted then we will see how to make this server uh, run how to start this mule server maybe i will pass the video i'll uh, um, resume the video once it gets extracted it's a waste of time it's just 19 percent right so yeah it took uh, seven to eight minutes for me to get it uh, extracted so now it is extracted in this uh, particular folder okay gets and downloads mm, no, this one na? okay so 
now we have downloaded the server and uh, we have extracted it into one folder now the next step is we need to start this mule uh, runtime we need to start this server okay so to do that you need to just uh, go to this uh, folder go to bin folder from here go to command prompt just uh, you you can just uh, click here and type cmd click enter it will navigate you through the Mm, command prompt for this path where you have extracted the folder and inside that bin folder okay so now to start this particular mule server now uh, see uh, to install this server we no need to do any other steps like uh, to install the java or other application we are going to do some installation process right so that is not uh, needed here it's just like any point studio just extract in one folder and to make this server up and running we have to run this command we need to first navigate to the bin folder and uh, go to the command run from there just uh, to start this server only simple command nothing but mule you can just type mule and enter see mule home is set to this particular standalone and now your application your mule runtime mule server mule standalone server is going to start in couple of minutes let me just maximize this See, these are all the default jar files as the dependencies it it has added by default. We no need to do anything. Just we need to just uh, type new and click enter. It will start the runtime. See, launching the JVM, then it will uh, start the mule server, and it has all the JDK versions. Everything it will show you. If you have time, just go through the one by one. See, all the default dependencies it is going to be. Add it to the server. With all these dependencies, your server will start. See, started default scheduler service. These are all the default services configured uh, by MuleSoft. We have not done anything yet. We just typed Mule and we just started. See, it is there now. So this can be modified by editing this one. Okay, let it be. So started the domain default. And mule is up and kicking every five five thousand milliseconds. So mule is up and kicking. This should be there. So our mule server is now up and running. So mule server is running in our own Windows machine now. It's not in Cloud Hub. And default domain has also be deployed. But in case of mule soft uh, standalone or on-premise deployments, we are not going to use this default domain. In case of Cloud Hub, we are going to use default domain, but in on-premise deployments, we are not going to use this default domain. We have to create one domain project. Uh, what is it meant by domain project? What is the use of it? We will see in our next video. Okay, but remember, we are not going to use this default domain. We need to create one domain project. Then we need to use that domain for our all applications. So this is how you can install the server and you can start the server. And let's go back to the folder structure once. Uh, let's try to understand uh, what is the use of different folders. So the major folders you have to concentrate is this bin one, just to start the mule server, and you have to remember this domains folder. So by using this domains folder only, we are going to deploy our domain projects. Here, two kinds of projects we are going to create in case of on-premise deployment. One is domain project. Another one is normal mule applications. Uh, usually we will do all the mule applications in studio, right? That is the one thing. Another one is domain projects. So to deploy the domain project, you need to come here into this particular folder. I mean, if you want to deploy it manually, uh, you need to come to this domain uh, folder. We need to deploy our application by using this path. If you want to deploy normal applications, normal mule applications, then we need to use this apps folder. Here we need to deploy our applications manually by going through this uh, command, I mean this path. And you have to remember one more thing that is logs. So see, if new, uh, now we are using our own server. In case of Cloud Hub, we have an option called logs. Um, logs is there for every application. There we can, once, once we click on the logs, we can see the logs for that application logs or server logs, anything over there in the Cloud Hub itself. But now we are not using the Cloud Hub engine. Cloud Hub runtime engine we are not going to use. We are using our own runtime MuleSoft engine which is installed in our own server, in our own laptop. So to check the logs, to check our all application logs or system logs, anything, we have to uh, heads up here. 
in this logs folder once you any application is deployed the logs related to that uh, particular applications will be visible for you here see here this is new ee log as of now we have we didn't have any uh, domain projects or any application projects so new do default domain project it, it is getting deployed by default right so this is the log file for the domain project if you can open it you will see better okay let me just open notepad plus plus okay let me open it using notepad this is the log specific to this new domain project okay okay it has okay 0 kb there is nothing maybe let's see this e log okay see this is just we have seen in our command prompt also like this is just enterprise edition log it's just server log the same thing we have seen in our command prompt also right so this log will be stored into this file like that so if once we create domain projects and our applications if you want to check logs you can go through go to this particular folder so just remember these four three folders as of now uh, bin sorry four folders bin is to start your mule application because inside that we have a bin bat sorry mule bat file by using this we need to start our application i mean start your server sorry then you need to remember this apps which is to deploy your normal mule soft applications and you need to remember this domains folder where we are going to deploy our domain projects and uh, the logs folder where we are going to see our logs also going forward we will see uh, what is this policies and services tools and also so policies also as the name mentioned if you would like to apply any policies from cloud hub to our mule runtime applications you can uh, those policies will be visible here downloaded here so let's see one by one so yeah in our next video we will see how to create the domain project and what is the use of it and all then we will uh, create multiple applications based on that particular domain project instead of default domain project and let's go on okay so if you don't want to miss any video in this uh, series please subscribe share and press the bell icon so that you will get notification we will deploy um, i mean we will create videos uh, uh, very frequently for this topic and uh, we will uh, publish it as soon as Okay, so don't get missed. Thank you. Thanks for watching.